Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Back again with yet another legendary creature from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I'm going to try and turn into Commander Deck. And today it's Akul the Unrepentant. Um, double black, double red. red, yeah, red. Um, for a 5-5 five, five, Scorpion Dragon Rogue, whose artwork, I have to say, I am absolutely stunned by. I think it's great. Anyway, the abilities. Flying, trample. And then we have a thing. Sacrifice three other creatures. You may put... A creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. Yeah, shame about the only once each turn thing, but it's strong, it's powerful. It's going to be really difficult to cast from my point of view in Commander because of the double mana color and no generic stuff. Um, but I think it's a card worth looking at and that's what I've done. So here, as usual, is today's deck tech. Hope you've hit the subscribe button while I've been talking. So here we go. Um, what I've tried to do with the deck is try and abuse, sacrifice three other creature things. Um, now I've gone a slightly different way. I know a lot of people have been talking about you know playing creatures that produce other creatures. They come in, um, like one of the goblins that comes to play gives you two other goblins, so on and so forth. There's a couple of them in here, but I've decided to go down a slightly different route, um, which. I'll show you a workout when I talk about the first creature, Phoenix Chick. Um, flying haste, can't block, and whenever you attack with three or more creatures, pay two, red. If you do, return the chick from your graveyard to battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, tapped and attacking. Um, yeah. Can you see where I'm going with this yet? I've got a lot of Phoenixes in the deck, so you can sacrifice the Phoenixes off quite happily most of the time and get them back at a later stage. You can get one of the big boys into play out of your hand. That's the plan anyway. Yeah. I'll say, can't test these decks, aren't on MTGO yet, but in my head it works, so we will see. Anyway, um, going from there, Dockside Extortionist obviously makes an appearance. Purely for the fact that we do actually need the treasures probably to cast Akul during the game. Uh, next up, Zulaport Cutthroat, because if we're going to sacrifice creatures, might as well get people drained a tiny little bit, you know, pinging a Ping in a life gain is always good. The next Phoenix that hits is the Flame Wake Phoenix. Um, get to come back, pain when it's ferocious. So, creature with power five or four or greater, pay one, get it back from your graveyard to the battlefield for one red mana. So, yep, yeah. Akul is five, so that works fine. From there, Judith the Scourge Diva um, pumps our creatures a little bit, and whenever our non token creatures die, we just get to ping things. Yeah, I'll go with that. Lightning Felix, another one that comes back when we pay the mana. Um, yep, okay, a little bit hard to get hold of this one, but on MTGO it's pretty straightforward. Liliana, Heretical Healer. Um, one second. You can see Liliana a little bit better now. Um, yeah, from Magic Origins. Lifelink version, two black and one. Um, when it dies, we can return to the battlefield transformed with a 2 2 zombie. Um, into Liliana, the Defiant Necromancer. It's just another non token creature we need to kill off, not Liliana itself. So, with our Phoenixes, we're going to be sacrificing to Akul. Should be fairly good. Um, Phoenix Dragon Engines here. We have got Mishra in the deck as well, so we can do the whole tournament of Mishra Lost to Phyrexia. So, they are both here. But I quite like the Dragon Engine um, purely because of the unearthed side of things. Again, another creature we can sacrifice if we need to at some stage to Akul, then bring back and hopefully pair up with Mishra later in the game. Another Phoenix, the Firebird, um, the Akum Firebird's also here. Land 4, we can pay 6, which is a little bit expensive, but yeah, late game, Firebird, fine, we'll cope with this. Decadent Dragon, because yeah, we're playing a red-black deck, why would I not play Decadent Dragon nowadays? Because, yeah, it just makes sense. Um, another Phoenix, Flame, Re for the Flame Reefed Phoenix, gets a tribute, so you can sack a creature to it if you want to. Um, enters the battlefield with tribute, wasn't paying, it gains haste, and when this creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. Yeah, this is the reason it's here. We're not gonna pay the tribute for this. We are gonna just do the whole haste thing, and when it dies, get it back in our hands, so we're ready to go again. It works with Phoenix as it does. Um, Ghana, Blood Fist of Keld, basically gives us whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking. Otherwise, Ghana deals one damage to each opponent, which you know, I'm quite happy with. Um, Kaldu Doomscourge basically goads everything for a turn, save us getting hit. Mishra, I've already mentioned, but I quite like Mishra himself in here. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Nice little bit of life gain in a black-red deck. Hmm. Um, 
And if mystery claimed by Gix and a creature named Phoenix Dragon Engine are attacking and you own them both, you control them, you exile them and meld them, it becomes Mishra Lost to Phyrexia. I won't go through it, you all know what it does, but it's here. Mogus, God of Slaughter, gives it a little bit of board control. Prosper Tomb Band, because I'm not really sure why it's coming up in red, but anyway, Prosper's weirdly coming up in red border, but it shouldn't be. Um, yeah. But it's here unless Prosper's already been banned for some reason in Commander I'm not aware of. Don't think so, but yeah, Ross Prosper's here. Uh, Vindictive Vampire, whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. A little bit bigger version of our sort of put Cotthroat. I want something a little bit different for the decks this came in. Another Phoenix in Warcry Phoenix. Whenever you pay through whenever you attack with three or more, pay two and a red. Every turn it from the graveyard tapped and attacking. Um, Bone Hall Dracosaur, I'm playing red, I think I've said it a couple of times now, you're going to see this in virtually every red deck I play going forward, where it's necessary, this one in here, very nice, thank you. Endrick, so our Master Breeder, gives us a whole load of things, we can, thralls we can sacrifice to Akul, hence why they're appearing in this deck. Um, Sauron also makes an appearance, I'm not, um, yeah, people don't like always, I'm, I'm going to omit something here, I'm not a great fan of playing Lord of the Rings cards in standard command no, in normal decks but this one kind of fitted in here um gain control of a creature and opponent controls until the end of turn and it gains haste until the end of turn um nick your opponent's biggest threat as long as Akul's in play and then sacrifice it off to go and get something out of your hand into play sounds good to me so conrad the grim creatures are going to the graveyard we might as well drain our opponents for one each time that happens Ancient Copper Dragon gives us the mana we need off the treasures, hopefully, to cast Aku early. And Dragon Lord Colligan um, gives everything haste, hence why it's in the deck. We've got, yeah, it's not that many dragon synergies in the deck, but this one's here just to give everything haste. And yeah, um, yeah, fine by me. Dreadhound, big one. Um, I quite like the millability of this for some reason. I don't know why, I just do. But whenever a creature dies or a creature's put in a graveyard, we drain everyone again. 6-6, six, six, big threat bit of a different thing um great these are all cards by the way from ancient copper dragon downwards these are the ones we're looking to put into play when we sacrifice three creatures just so we're clear on this grave titan is grave titan gives us a couple of zombies and then every time it attacks we get a couple of zombies so we're getting some you know two-thirds of the way to sacking off more creatures inferno the star mance has just got big fly with haste that we can pump and finish things off um ugh. Bought in the wrong rack version of Rakdos. Anyway, Rakdos, patron of chaos. Um, yeah, another great one to drop into play to make our opponents do strange choices at our end step. Bladewind, Deathless Tyrants here. Deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker for each creature card in your graveyard. You get a Black Knight, another one that gives you tokens that you can then sack off to Akul if you need to. Skyline Despot, just because I like being the monarch as much as they can. And as long as we're the monarch, we get a 5 5 dragon. Um, the Balrog, Durin's Blade is also in here um can't be blocked except by legendary creatures when it dies destroy target artifact or creature opponent controls and because we're sacrificing permanence you know if we sacrifice three things off to akul it does drop the cost by three so we could potentially play this for four mana if we needed to another way around it the last two are just a bit of fun um phyrexian triniform when it dies as you know gives us three golems and then we get to one core it back so we just you know getting other ways of doing things and triplicate titan when that dies we get to get things as well a golem with a vigilance artif trample and i forgot the other one flying flying there we go makes perfect sense as the things you want to be dropping into play off akul not too many planeswalkers um zariel the archduke of avernus so we can give everything haste if we need to and a bit of a pump and then also create some tokens that we can you know when they die we get to ping things like that plan and liliana the dread horde is also here um creatures we control die gives us cards to draw um so we get things in our hand to play with akul and we can comp complete uh, create zombie tokens so we've got fodder for akul not too much in the way of spells in the deck i'm going to be honest we've just got chain reaction damnation and blasphemous act for complete board control hopefully and then we've got a lot of ramp um now Akul's a bit different because it's got no colors mana cost in here a little bit harder but we have got things in there that will help so we've got mox tantalite 
gives us colored mana elective immortality shuffle everything back in in case it goes pale shaped soul ring is here because at some stage aqua will die and we will need to pay the command attack so they're coming in for that arcane signet for color along with charcoal and fire diamond Jet Medallion and Ruby Medallion cut the cost of our spells down that we're going to be casting. Um, the Mind Stone, Rakdos Signet, uh, Talisman of Indulgence, Fort Vessel, and the Rakdos Key Rune, just for something a bit different, which I think is worth talking about in a second. All help us cast Akul if we need to. Um, obviously, the Medallion Stone, but they just cut the cost very down along with Mind Stone. But Mind Stone is here as a card draw, if nothing else. The Rakdos Key Rune I've included. Now, it's not the one you'd usually see in a deck like this, I'll be honest, but in a pinch, you can turn it into a creature and use that's the third creature you need to sacrifice off to get something good out of your hand and to play on the cheap from Akul. So bear that in mind. Now, one thing I have included in the deck are a lot of enchantments that produce tokens. Purely because what I want to make sure is I've always got three creatures to sacrifice and this gives us a cheap way to do it. Um, so we've got Bitter Blossom for a fairy token. Um, we've got the Dread Horde of Vagin so we can amass one for an army at each turn. Bastion of Remembrance is another way of draining and gaining. So that's in here but also when we play it gives us the one one human soldier. Goblin Assault gives us a goblin every turn um, and goblin creatures we control have to attack but they will be being sacked off to Akul. Court of Embrith it gives us a knight every turn. Endless Ranks of the Dead, as long as we've got some zombies in play, which I'm hoping we will have, we will start producing zombies each turn. Always make sure you've got one zombie held back if you can. It's always good fun. Um, then we've been a bit cheesy because we have got Grave Pact and we have got Dictate of Erebos here. Both the same idea. Um, so if we're sacking our creatures off to Akul, our opponents get to sacrifice their creatures off, which clears the battlefield a little bit. So, yeah. Open the Graves, it gives us a zombie every time a non-token creature we control dies, so that fits in nicely. Infernal Genesis, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top card of his or her library into the graveyard, and then she or she puts X11 black minion creature tokens onto the battlefield, Rex, that card's converted mana cost. Yeah, okay then. That's a great way of getting a whole load of things. Yes, it's symmetry, yes, it gives everyone the same benefit. Everyone starts getting black minion tokens, that's fine. But... Mm. Feeds Akul means your things will be bigger with a bit of luck, and obviously, you know, sacking things off means they'll disappear quite quickly. And then Grave Betrayal, just a little bit of fun at the end here. Whenever a creature you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and it's a zombie. Okay, then Grave Pack, Dictate, and Grave Betrayal. Yeah, okay, probably get a reputation in this deck. Lands pretty straightforward, um, black and red all the way through. The usual selection of things are here. Um, one thing I will point out, Field of the Dead here along with Fable Passage, because, you know, it's me. And we've also got our usual Reliquary Tower and Temple of the False God. But we have got Urborg in as well, just to make sure that if we do have this and these two in our opening hand, we still get double black if nothing else. And that's it. That's my take for today on Akul, the Unrepentant. Um slightly different to what I think people have been talking about. I haven't seen anyone else using phoenixes or any of the enchantments to produce tokens yet. I may have missed them, but that's how I've gone with it. It seemed to work for me. Um, anything you think I've missed out, let me know in the comments down below. Please, please, please hit the subscribe button if you can to my YouTube channel. 373, as I sit here and record this video today, still getting a little bit close to that magic 500 number by the end of 2024, so please help out if you can. Um, if you want to see me play the deck when these cards go live on MTGO next Tuesday, I believe it is. Um, what is it? This, where, where are we? The 16th, I think, it goes live. Um, that's the streams that week will be featuring as many of these decks as soon as I can pick up the legends. So you can come watch me play them out over there. So there's a link to Twitch down below. Um, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'll be back very soon with another one. Take care. Bye.